Hey, Gigi. Hey, Danny. Hey, sis. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. Just doing my rounds before we leave. How are Sounds you? Sounds fun. I'm doing good. Is <sighs> right. <laughs> Let's sigh. I I just literally got and I had to block this this young lady just now. She was on um, Afro Indigenous Women's Post attacking her for being more uh, black presenting and telling her she's not Taino and that her that she's Taino and that we don't look like that. And it, I was like, you know what? what? We're having fun. a live. Yeah, I was like, we're having a live at nine. We're reconnecting people <clears throat> so you can get the proper information and properly reconnect. And she's like, no, I reconnect to my elders who are my parents. I was like, man, this is oh, why we do need to have this live. <sighs> I can't hold it, say. Well, I mean, hopefully more people show up and, you know, we're able to get some things cleared up because I know, like, um, there's been an increase in comments on my videos of people talking about how, like, they've either uh, given up on reconnecting completely or that they're, like, really hesitant to reconnect because they've seen a lot of the back and forth that other people have had to deal with while they're reconnecting. So it's like, uh, let's see if yeah. we can't, like, get some things situated so people can I don't know decolonize without dumping their trauma on everybody right <sighs> but yeah I got my little background and stuff I'm reading it now lived experience verse 23 <laughs> And the integrity, <laughs> indigeneity. Oh, yeah, indigeneity. Because there's the there's the I did my DNA test, so I get to claim it. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, slow down, slow down, friend. I'm trying to see if I have the. Is it gonna let me do? Oh, look at that. Oh, it's only six. It won't let me do nine, I guess. Oh, wow, that sucks. Unfair. Well, I'll drop for anybody who's connected and is going to come up here, um, you know, so we can have more people who have experience speak on this because, you know, I don't I don't like to speak on it too much because I'm so new, you know, only a year in. So... Well, I mean, oh, everyone's, well, Mayati. Is that any better? No, it's not. <laughs> I'm trying. Let me send this out.
that any better? Oh, just a little bit. Yes. Well, that's a, that's a, that was that's way better though. All right, I sent I sent the live out to Chris. Welcome, welcome everybody. Hey, Chris. Boom. Okay. Hopefully my internet doesn't act up. Hey. Miyari Chris, what's up? Halikadobu. Um, this is what I got so far, but hold on, let me see. Still putting on makeup at the moment. Um, did you guys discuss anything yet? Not yet. We're basically waiting on people to start showing up. <sighs> I just typed how to say how are you in Hiwatahia. Um, in our Yukayakes. Uh, how are you? I like that. Buiti Ariabu. Online. <laughs> hey, Yatina. Is it Iatina or Yatina? I don't know if I'm pronouncing. I don't know which way to pronounce it correctly. Uh, Diana? Diana, I think. I don't know. I know it was Diana, Diana indigenous, but now she she has Yatina La or Iatina. I think I said Iatina oh. in videos, but it might be Yatina. And I'm a pendeja and pronounced it wrong. I don't mean to mispronounce people's names. Okay. I'm so sorry. Call me Taina. Gotcha. Okay. She's like, it's that simple. Hello, ladies. Hey, how are you doing today, lovely? I'm doing good. What about you guys? So far, so good. Yeah. I'm a little... Um, Got some nature's Prozac, so have a good night. <laughs> Sometimes it's needed, though, I swear. It is. It is. So? Well, Chris, is, Chris is getting all pretties. <laughs> Extra pretty, because she's already pretty. Oh. Right? She's trying to make sure nobody has a chance. <laughs> the good thing I'm out of out of the pool. Out of the pool. Yeah, not in the dating pool anymore. The dating pool kind of freaks me out if you really think about it. Honestly, that that scares me quite a bit. I'm like same. Do you know how crazy these people are right now? If my husband and I don't work out, I'd I'd probably just be a crazy cat lady and just like have my moments of honus and then just go back to being a hermit with my yeah, cat. You mother. literally you literally just described my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going the other way. I'm not doing this no more. Fuck that noise. Oh, What's that's that? definitely like if I was gonna be in another relate, I probably wouldn't even be in another relationship because fuck that. But if I did, it would it would probably just be a woman. Yeah. Chris, shut up. Say what you just said. I'd probably be a hoe for a minute, and then I'd be a hermit. No, I'd still be a hoe. I'm not changing my. I got nothing to hide. I'd be a hoe for show. I don't care. Oh. You want to be the only. Some cute indigenous girlies, right? Yeah, I would never ever, ever get rid of me. date outside my race again. Yeah, never get rid of me. Well, I'm not trying to get rid of you. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I would. I've only ever dated two guys that were non-indigenous my whole life. That was just weird. Help worked out again. Yeah, my husband is one of two white boys that I've dated. 
I got them all wrong. <laughs> the other flavor wasn't good. This one actually no flavor. Well, the other one was flavorless. This one has flavor. So right. <laughs> shut up. Ooh, you're spicy, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's more than just salt and pepper. <laughs> There's some paprika, some nutmeg. I tell my partner, who's a white cis man, that he's the last Jedi. I, ca I call my, my unicorn. Yeah. Yeah. Aww. He's my unicorn. There's many kids, I'm good Do what? So with this many kids, I'm good where I'm at. I can imagine. Yeah. Where Girl, I thought three was a lot. You win. Like, you go far and beyond kicking my ass in that department. You've got to be super mom with, like, the patience of a goddess. Because, like, how? I'd be constantly yelling at everyone to shut up. Like, I need quiet for five minutes. Just five minutes. Oh, it's like that. Like, when I, the moment I get off work, like, I want to relax. But then my baby is like, no, nurse me. So, I don't really get too relaxed. This is relaxing as it gets, just makeup and, yeah. <laughs> you look cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> we're trying to look good because, like, we're going to Olive Garden and it's, it's been a long time since we went on a date. Like, I'm always working. Going, yeah. It's been a long so. time. I'm like that total social awkward person that'll wear like you know back in the day how I used to have the punk shirts and then like the, the pants I'm totally that kind of girl <laughs> I'll show up to a date and that and be like at a f fancy restaurant and everybody's like staring at me and I'm like what <laughs> stop looking at me can a girl eat <laughs> Yeah, like, I started, like, being more girly, like, because, like, whenever, whenever I was a single mom, I got so many people that, that would be like, I don't know how you do it, you look so tired, get some rest, and then those ones just, um, I just wanted to look like I had it all together, so now I'm just a glam, like, person all the time. Oh, you can pull it off, like. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Like, I used to be able to wear, like, a full face of makeup and stuff, but I can't anymore. I'm just like, no. <laughs> it's too much. I don't like it. Well, it, the, you know, the stuff that you put up, what was that, concealer? Hold yeah. on. Yeah. I need it under my eyes, though. I'd be looking like a bitch yeah. that ain't got no sleep in 100 years. <laughs> <laughs> Same. No, I have to be putting. I put like a cream, like a cooling cream, and then I put uh -huh. some foundation under my eyes because I would look like I haven't slept in a hundred years. <laughs> you know me. I can't. I can't do it. I break out in hives like every time. Hmm. Here I am going to sleep in makeup. <laughs> like sometimes like especially like being a bartender like I it's hard for me to get some rest so I will fall asleep in makeup and I just go to work well I already touch it up a little bit but I'll do it all over again mm -hmm. I'm this off I put on like a zombie movie I like tinted moisturizers. Sometimes I don't even like wearing foundation. Somebody was telling me a tinted moisturizer. Yeah, it's like pretty Gotta go back in the Hello. How is everybody? Good, you? Hello. I, well, I'm better now. I had a few panic attacks earlier. Oh, no. I'm doing better, so. That's good. Um, just... I'm really interested in the conversations. Let's Hello. Oh, that's why I joined. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah, Hello. Hi. Hi. Oh my god! Everybody's so pretty. <laughs> Thank hey. you. A bunch of baddies. <laughs> yes. 
We're basically just waiting on two more people and um, we'll kickstart the conversation. But in the meantime, we're just going to kiki it up. You go live (laughs) for so long. I miss your lives. (laughs) <sighs> I'm working on some art right now for my for my D and D campaign. Um, we're doing Curse of Ooh. Strahd, but our DM is a lesbian, so Strahd is a hot lady, and my Ooh. character replaces like the Irina Mina characters, like the reincarnation. So it's like a whole intense lesbian thing. It's great. It's amazing. So <laughs> you want to see it? I'm working on it right now. Yeah, oh, okay. whatever you're willing to show us, by all means. Yeah, I have so much art. Right. My character is actually indigenous. So Miyari. That's nice. Oh, sorry. That's so nice. Yeah, I've been. So I don't know what color to make her outfit. Oh, that's but I have these. Um, but that's my character. Her name's Awanita. She's a. She's like an elf princess lady. She's a warrior. She's really cool. Um, I love her. I designed her outfit. I actually gave her tattoos. Hold up. That that's not a good that's not good. That's not close enough. Here we go. So I gave her some tattoos on her face. I hope oh, you guys can nice. see it. But she has like the chin tattoo and then like the eye tattoo. But I like made it so like I'm Paul Houghton and um uh our women used to like tattoo themselves with like flowers and stuff. So I kind of took the tattoos that I see on indigenous women today, like the chin and the and the one across the eyes, and I like kind of put flowers on them. It was like it was kind of combination of those two things, because I didn't I didn't feel fully comfortable giving her like tattoos from other tribes. It just felt weird to me because you know yeah I'm not from those tribes, so I kind of you know took what my people used to do and yeah I, I love her. Sense. She's like That's my awesome. favorite. That is crazy stuff. What I've been working on. I love it when she shows us her work. Thank you I for do. sharing I that with us. That. That's uh-huh. awesome. Yeah, I'm working on um her parents right now because her mom is a variant human, which they don't really they're not really clear about variant humans. So I'm just like, she's mixed with elf. Yeah, that's why she's a variant. She's mixed with elf um there you go um, yeah i just i i was like <laughs> yeah i heard people mixed with like ancient elves and that's why they're variants now um and then her dad is um uh, is an elder and elf um i really like elves so every single one of my characters are elves i love elves so much it's an obsession at this point <laughs> <laughs> i love your obsession though <laughs> I love hearing about this. everyone's obsessions. Sorry, Sarah. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. No, no, that's okay. I was just gonna say because it just I don't know, it brings me joy to see you just in your zone, right? Like I love it. And I'm like, why can't I find anything? It's because my light's not. <laughs> she has like an <laughs> arm tattoo that I gave her. It's like um it's like the it's like the similar design to like her face tattoos, but like there's they're more wrapping around her arm and stuff. Yeah, just want to show it off. I'm really proud of it. it. (laughs) Well, we're really proud of you. You're doing awesome. Thank you. Very talented. Mm -hmm. I do commissions if anyone's interested. So, really? Yeah, I bead too. Um, I'm actually gonna be beading Chris something. Um, when I get better beads, he had on. The the bead earrings that Chris was wearing in one of her videos. The hoops. Oh my gosh. And Chris, no. Chris had them on and um Taino Library had them on. The the long ones. The ones the, that Oh like... yeah, those, those. Yeah. Yeah, those. Oh, I I think I know how to do those. I love them. I have the center pieces for everything, but I lost like two things of my beads. Like they broke. So I have to get that back. Yeah. Um, I don't really have a bead station. I keep them on lock, so I have to find a better place to keep them. I want to support, like you know, indigenous, like when they make like the earrings and stuff like that. I want to support, but I don't find nobody to like buy from. Um, well, I, I know, know people. Oh no, go ahead. Sorry. My bad. I got excited. <laughs> <laughs> I know Diamond Dog. Um. Uh, beads and uh, there's a couple of artisans that you can go to my link tree to find as okay. as well. Yeah, I bought from Diamond. Okay, 
There was somebody named, I think her name was like Birdie something. Oh my gosh, she has beautiful work. I don't know who she is personally, I but I've seen about. her work. Yeah, her work is beautiful. My favorite artist, uh, she's on, she's on Instagram, and uh, she has like a. Th- I not me forgetting her name. <laughs> I was just <laughs> in Digit Inked on on Instagram. I'm always buying her piece. Hold up, I actually have her pieces. Give, give, me, give me one second. shuffle through all my things <laughs> I have a few of her pieces like, I think she she does like gothic stuff too so like if you're like one of them gothic indigenous girlies you know Ooh. everything <laughs> has also- yeah the topic for tonight is um, reconnecting properly uh, we're rating on two other people. I think Odin's actually here. Um, Lucy, would you mind um, dropping down so I could let Odin mm-hmm. up because he's mm-hmm. one of the. Okay. Okay. Thank you, love. Do? Thank you for, <laughs> for okay, kicking with us for a minute. Okay. Okay. Hold on a second. Let me. Earrings. There we go. I I'm waiting. The- <laughs> <laughs> Those are not them. Okay, here we go. So she does like if you're one of those um like this is the stuff she makes. Oh nice. Is, yeah, so like she has one for the lovers. I have another pair of hers that I absolutely adore. Ooh. I love it. Yeah, this is in Digit Inked on um, Instagram. And I'm always having her stuff. I also have, these are not from her, but this is from the Nanako Lenny Lenape shop that I go to and talk to all the people there. Ooh, this is my favorites. I wish I could wear them, but my ears are not pierced yet. So I'm going to go put this back and then I'll join you guys for the conversation. Actually, would it, um, would you, would you, uh, mind hopping down for just a minute because uh, our last guest is in the chat so uh, we're going to go ahead and let her up. Oh so yeah, that... definitely. My bad. Oh, but we'll be able to uh, chat some more later but thank you for coming up and yeah, no problem. talking with us and showing us that beautiful beadwork. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, I'll be in the chat. Okay. Bye. Hold on a second. Where... I do. I love Celine. She's such a sweetheart. She is. She is super sweet. Like she's reached out to me in so many hard times, and just really she really is. To me. That's one thing I can say. Like there's there's a toxic side to TikTok, but there's also a side that because of that, like I'm starting to toxic make more TikTok, connections. TikTok is freaking out <clears throat> right about now. Huh? What? <laughs> What about what? Huh? I missed it. Nothing. I'm being an asshole. Go ahead. Oh, oh. I was going to say that, um, you know, the plus side of TikTok is that you get to make connections with uh, people like Celine and Lucy and all of you awesome people in the box right now. But um, let me go ahead and see if I can change these. So I don't know how easy it is to read or not, but I put the little outline or whatever in an image to help us like, well, help me more than anyone stay uh, focused, but um, yeah. I mean, yeah. I Do what? Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to go by the list. Yeah, I mean, I figured, yeah. Be, since we were gonna be winging it basically, we have like a little bit of topics like um, doing intros. Everyone introduce themselves. I don't know if you guys want to go in order like Sarah and come back around and all that good stuff. Let yeah. everyone know who you are. Yeah, yeah we can do that. Okay. White and Jais Gwistansen. Hello, my name is Sarah. I'm from the Okanagan Nation here in BC. We are unseated and... Nice to meet everybody. <laughs> that I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I guess we're going to come back around to Odin. You there, Cheyenne? Yeah, I'm here. I'm just feeding baby. Aw. I make good food. Oh, is Odin not here? Sorry, Sorry guys. Um, I'm Cheyenne. Uh, Scano. Cheyenne Yasso. I am Cuban Nation with Clan. And my people come from upstate New York, but through war and because fuck George Washington, we ended up in Ontario. <laughs> yes, fuck the colonizers. Ask him. <laughs> Specifically George Washington. I blame him for everything. <laughs> Number one fuckery, Columbus and Number George Washington. Washington. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my um my nation was burnt out of our homelands um in the seventeen hundreds, in the seventeen seventies actually. And George Washington was a general at the time that it happened. So it was it happened under his orders. And then he became president. Oh love so fuck everybody that voted for him too. <laughs> and their mamas and their mamas mamas <laughs> baby's mamas mamas <laughs> do you want to go next Chris uh, Chris I'm Oglala Lakota um, uh, we're located in the Dakotas there are seven tribes of Lakota people, but there's also three three clans, Lakota, Dakota, Nakota, and that's where my, my people come from. And I'm also have Chakta. Um, my family in Oklahoma does claim and recognize me. I'm on the family tree down there. Um, but I mostly grew up Lakota, so I'm still like, I guess trying to, like I wanna reconnect to like my Chakta side as well. And it wasn't until I got on TikTok that I seen so many other chakras, so I was like a media follow. And then Native TikTok, that's whenever I came across meeting all of you on, on Native TikTok. So but yeah. I used to just be about makeup and then I saw my <laughs> So I was like, hey, hey my relatives. So but yeah, that's how I came across on TikTok. Very awesome. <laughs> You doing work stuff, Gigi, or? Oh no, I'm I'm not busy. Um, hi, my name is Gigi, Baby G, whatever you prefer, and I am Taino. Um, my ancestors come from the island of Borican, um, and you know I'm here to listen and learn, and I'm I've been reconnecting for a year now, so yeah. <laughs> Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is, uh, um, yeah, my, my role in my community. Um, I'm a pipe carrier. Uh, I Sundance at an early age, and that's how I came, came, got, got my role. I also earned that. Like, I worked hard about four days for that. So, <laughs> and then um, I guess my role to my elders is to um, share the pipe with them, the peas, you know, whatever teachings and stuff. I'm still on my journey with that and I try to talk to my elders as often as I can. So that's my part. I would say I'm familiar with my, with my, uh, I grew up with my people in my community. It's just that um, there's a lot of stuff that I still have to learn. So the day that I'm fluent in Lakota, uh, yeah, it's probably the day that I'll say I'm fully connected. Awesome. Yeah, I hope to be fluent in my language because I'm definitely not right now. But um Da Irile Elva Watuyanani. Um my people are Taino from Boriken, Puerto Rico. And uh I'm currently on Seminole land. So um oh and I also I do hold the title in my community um as a council person. But, you know, everything I'm saying in this live is just me as an individual. I'm not saying it like representing 
the yeah. community or anything like that. But um, so I don't know if y'all want to jump into the first topic, which is uh, lived experiences versus 23 and me indigeneity. Who wants to go first? Uh, I guess I could start. Um, <clears throat> Sarah wants to because Sarah is. A, I could just kind of go off of like what Sarah because she seems very very well and um, active in her community. Mm -hmm. so I just start off to you. <laughs> I could do. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> I didn't realize what the guys are saying. So there is. <clears throat> And I hate to say it this way, but there is a big difference between having indigenous ancestry and knowing who your people are, like within community and everything, right? Um, mm -hmm. I was born and raised within my people. I was raised traditionally. Um, I had multiple moms and that's how we did it for our people, was multiple moms, multiple dads. Uh, Mm -hmm. I just noticed that there's, you know, when people find out that they're actually Indigenous to Turtle Island, they tend to run with that and not fully understand that it's not, it's not a race. It's, yeah. it's a way of life. It's a way of being. It's, it's a whole culture that you, you got, you know, you got to put the work in to, to get to know. Yes. And I, I think that's where... A, I think that's where a lot of people really struggle and, you know, I'm always here to help. Like I, I do, I help out as much as I can. If I don't have the answers, I try to find the answers for somebody else. But I notice some people get on the app and they're just, well, I'm indigenous. And then, you know, well, where are you from? Who's your people? You know, like trying to get to know you and they fly off the handle about that. And it's, it's it, like in community, like if say if I went to a different tribe, like one of our neighboring tribes or nations up here, we say nations, and they asked me, well, who are you? And I just said, I'm Sarah. And then my last name, they'd be like, no, who are you? Yeah. Right. So then I would have to explain like my lineage, like I'm from the Okanagan Nation. My great grandmother was this. My my or my tupa was this. My tama, my grandmother was you know this is who she is. This is the line I come from. Um, stuff like that, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. general areas where they where they could place you, like say Vernon, right? I tell them my family in Vernon. Stuff like that, and it's. I don't know why, you know, it's like, I get there were some people that needed to hide who they were. And I think that was part of my mistake on this app was saying that because uh, some people really ran with it. Yeah. Uh, when I was really just trying to explain what my, my dad had to go through. Cause my dad is Cree, uh, my stepdad. Um, and he, mm -hmm. he had to hide where he came from. Otherwise, he would get into fights, like physical altercations. Um, so when we lived out there with him, he even told me, don't tell anybody where we're from. But it wasn't for the same reasons that are on here. Uh, yeah, I just noticed this big, I don't even know how to explain it. This big issue with people claiming indigeneity and not acting it, I guess would be the way, yeah. or even wanting to learn it. Not taking the actual steps. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. We don't yeah. get to live in a community. Yeah, right? They're claiming it before they really know what it means. You know, they don't know the teachings. Yeah. They don't know what protocols as far as like, what teachings you do share with the public and what you keep within the community only and stuff like that. Um, they just want to claim it to be able to make their little videos on TikTok or whatever, yeah. but they're not actively decolonizing and putting in the work to, you know, really 
connect with their people and with their ancestors. Well, and it's, it's also that it's also to um, even people who, cause we call it status up here and like down <clears> in the <throat> state, right? Even if right. you have status, um, if you're not raised around your people or you don't have any teaching, cause all of us nations here, we all know each other, like within the interior, we all know each other. Like I could phone up anywhere and figure out who somebody is with just two phone calls. Right. We're, we're, we're smaller nations, but we're really close. Um, if I find That's something's different. out of line, I, I go and I ask, right. I'm like, where did this come from? Stuff like that. Um, there's been a few times where I've done that and turns out the person never, ever had any formal teachings. And that person is now teaching online and it really irked me because I know, yeah, selling teachings because I actually asked. Oh, wow. Selling them too. Yeah. So (sighs) stuff like that is happening within the app and if we, we don't sell our teachings here. Mm Mm-hmm. We don't. We have our oral teachings, which you are given first. And that is your your first learning block, right? You learn your oral teachings. And then anything else that's online, then you can learn that. But without the the oral stuff, this means nothing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we kept it that way so that we could safeguard it. I mean, you have to. I think a lot of people... Oops, sorry, go sorry, ahead. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go. You go um, ahead. I think, I think a lot of people are um, confusing ancestry with lineage, and those are two completely different things. Yeah. Like, you cook you it? could be... Cook it? Yes, baby, I'll cook it. <laughs> like, for instance, with my nation, like, my nation is fully matr- matrilineal, right? So we could have somebody that's <laughs> born and raised in the community who... You know, dad could be 100% blood quantum and mom could be 75% blood quantum. But if that mother's mother's mother is white or black or Asian or something that's not our people, even like another nation that's not our people, that kid doesn't have the lineage to claim a nation and clan with us. And on the opposite side of that spectrum, we could have somebody with a quarter and eight blood quantum, but they have that family lineage. So they're able to claim that clan and, and sit with their clan and learn from their people. There's processes for people who fall into that clanless category. Yes. I'm making your bacon, bro. And <laughs> he's like, he literally just ate like a whole freaking meal of Kentucky fried chicken. And he's still hungry. But um, that, what is the word I'm looking for? Like the, the demand that we accept people into our clans and our nations based on their DNA and, and telling us that we're not allowed to question what family they come from is, is asking us to erase ourselves. And people don't realize that. Like, If somebody comes to me and they say to me, you know, I have, I don't know, 58% blood quantum according to my 23 and me. Cool. So let's figure out where you come from so we know if you have a lineage. And if you don't have a lineage, let's find somebody to take you in so you can learn what you need to learn. But when I question people, I get yelled at for it by people who are not part of our nation. And that's the worst part is when it's coming from people outside of our people that are saying you, you can't erase somebody's indigeneity or you can't say that they're not indigenous. Nobody's saying that they're not. What we're saying is just because they hold the bloodline doesn't mean they hold the lineage because our lineage travels a certain way for a, for a reason. We've done this for thousands of years and it suited us for thousands of years. We can't change it just because somebody doesn't like it. Because then we're erasing what our ancestors gave us. And if we do that, we start erasing our culture. And if we start erasing our culture, we start erasing us. And then we don't exist anymore because we're following a whole new 
set of rules that never belonged to us before because somebody doesn't like it. Yeah. And that's not fair to be- us. And that's some and that's some white people shit to be like, oh well, you know, I don't like it because this doesn't suit me. So you need to change all of your ways for me personally. Forget everybody else yeah. in the culture that existed prior to my even existing on this planet, on this earth. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, how entitled do you have to be? And the way the governments do it is completely different from the way that we would govern ourselves. Mm-hmm. Right? So like our my governing system is completely different from the way that it would have been done in Canada anywhere. Like and mine's different from Cheyenne's. Right? We we bring everybody home. If you have the blood, we bring you home. Mhm. And it's our responsibility to to help you with all of that. It's all of our responsibility. It's not just certain people. And that's just the way it's done, right? Um, My nation, like my my families and my nation and stuff, we will adopt. Like we do. We have honorariums, like people who are honorary in Skeleton speaking people or Skeleton. We have honorariums for that kind of stuff. And that's because they've been here forever and they have shown that they have a sense of pride and a want to be with the people. And they're showing that they're learning, Mm -hmm. right? If you're not willing to learn, don't expect people just to go, oh, well, hey, here, I'm going to give you teachings. I don't know what it is you want to learn, but I'm going to give you teachings, That's not how that works. You have to ask questions. If you don't ask the questions, how are we going to know what to say to you? Exactly. And, and like, that's my thing too, is like when somebody tells me they're reconnecting, that's always my first question is, so what have you learned? Because Mm -hmm. if you're reconnecting, that means you're actively seeking information because you, the way that I have explained it is like, it's like you're a computer and you have this, this plug. And you're walking around with this cord in your hand. But if you don't have a wall or an outlet to plug into, what are you reconnecting to? Because you're not getting into the network. You need to find your, this sounds so wrong. You need to find your plug. (laughs) (laughs) Plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. Well, yeah, I'm going to, but uh, that's actually one thing I wanted to say was uh, part of part of learning teachings is asking questions mm-hmm. because yeah. in Indian country they they're not just gonna teach you shit. You have to ask. Um, so I actually asked how I should introduce myself. So. Um, I, you know, Sarah and Shai taught me how I should. So, um, hello, my name is Odin Phoenix. I am indigenous to Turtle Island. My bloodlines come from the region of El Salvador and Yucatan. I have ties to matriarchs of the Okanagan Nation and the Cayuga Nation through reconnection and bloodlines. I am unapologetically reconnecting, reclaiming, and still learning my culture. Hey, you did it. That was beautiful. <laughs> Nailed it. I, that was I, beautiful. I, I, I need to learn how to introduce myself like that. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> but, I mean, that's that's as easy as, as it was, right? That, like, so many people get upset because you know they're asked to introduce themselves you know say where they're from that's just as easy as what i just did and it's not something that should the response shouldn't be a defensive one when somebody asks you who your people are like that's that's your it's your time to shine you know what i mean that's your time to represent your people and you know be like, I'm here because they 
were here and did what they did. You know what I mean? This is who they are. This is where I come from. These are the lands, you know, my people are from. Yeah. And for those that don't know, if you don't know, then you don't know, right? Like you don't know where you come from and, and that's okay too. Just explain that. Say I have, my bloodline is here. Like I have indigenous bloodline, like I have it in my blood, but I don't know where I come from yet. And I am, I am searching. Yeah. And you, when you say that, you're going to have more people go, okay, let me help you. Let, let me help you. you. Yep. Yeah. And you may or may not get adopted. Like, oops, sorry. Go ahead, Cheyenne. I think a lot of people don't, especially, especially those of us that grew up on the res, we don't ever look at growing up on the res as like, that was a privilege because it sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Like, I didn't have running water till I was nine. We had to draw water out of a well till I was nine. And we didn't even have a bathroom. We had a bucket in a room. Like, you want to talk some red shit? Like, we had a bucket in a room. The that went pot. from room to room because people got sick of smelling pee. And we had slot pails. And for those of you who don't know what a slot pail is, that is literally all of the scraps from dinner, all of the old coffee. <laughs> Basically, what you can't throw in the garbage can went into the slot pail. And that all went out outside and got buried somewhere. Um, it wasn't actually until talking to Odin that I realized how privileged I am to have grown up on the reserve because I grew up... With my family, I grew up with my teachings. I didn't fully grow up with my language. Now that's, that's a whole another story, but um, I grew up with the opportunity to learn my language in my school, which is a very new thing, really. But like when I was going to school in the early 90s, we had language classes in our schools. Um, but I also come from a very broken reserve. And... And we're like 15 minutes away from the first residential school in Canada. So we, we have lost connection to a lot of things. We've lost full ceremonies. Um, a lot of people aren't fully speaking the language. But now because we've done so much language revitalization, a lot of our younger people are fluent. Like my son, English is my son's second language. And um, we need to take that into consideration when we have people that are coming to us for help. And, and kind of just, you know, realize that that's our responsibility. If you're connected to your culture and you're learning and you're, you're being taught things, your responsibility is to pass those teachings on when somebody else needs them. Yeah. And that's not to say that it's expected of you every time, you know, like 100% of the time put the work in because really that's not what it is. Um, when you find people that you... Hang on, dude, I'm making it. Why are you... <laughs> he's, a, he's all cocooned <laughs> in a blanket on the kitchen floor. Wait for his <laughs> but when you find somebody that you see is putting that work in, that is... Um, I don't want to say worthy, because worthy sounds gross. Um, they're ready for those teachings that you have. Mm -hmm. At that point, that's when you're like, okay, my responsibility is to teach you what I know. And um, that's kind of what pulled me and Odin together was me seeing him craving that connection, not just like, oh, yeah, well, I'm indigenous and I don't know really where my people come from, but oh, well, I'm just indigenous. Like he is is craving that connection to his family, to his people. And I saw that in him. And. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm going to teach you what I know from, from my end until we can find your people. And that's, what, this is how we're going to do this. And um, yeah, that's kind of where we're at. See, and Odin has bloodline to me. So I've been teaching him from where we are because that, that's my responsibility is pass that on to Odin. So Odin can pass that on to his kids and their kids and their kids. Right. Um, yeah, but yeah, but getting back to that, like, I didn't understand, you know, because when, when they first said, you know, you're, you're privileged for being on a reserve, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, my reserve's been on and off boiled water advisories that we didn't even know we had, right? 
I have autoimmune now and they think it's because of the water. Like, what do you like? Right. And I had to really sit there and like, kind of really think about it. And yeah, it's because I grew up within my culture. It grew up, I grew up around my people. I grew up with the teachings and all that. And it's, it's not easy. It is not I'd like that really opened my eyes. And I, I realized it's not easy. You know, both sides, it's not easy. Like, it's not a, not a, what is that, uh, oppression Olympics? Yeah. But it, it's really not easy on either side. So we need to figure out a way to come together so that we can all help one another. Because what are we doing if we're not bringing our people home? That part. Right. I feel like everyone's indigenous to somewhere. So when you see somebody who's like genuinely trying to find their roots and reconnect and being respectful, then you know what I mean? Um, Like you, uh, Odin's also a cousin of mine. So like when he sent me, I can't remember what it was a video of, but it was in Spanish. And he was like, can you translate this for me? I was like, of course, you got it. You know, because I understand that being born and raised in Puerto Rico and being taught English and Spanish um, is kind of a privilege. And um, I don't know my indigenous language. I'm learning that, but, you know, I had like minimal teachings and grew up with a lot of my family nearby, you know, multiple family members living down the road in the same neighborhood as me and stuff, you know, everybody watching and looking out for each other and running around barefoot, playing basketball in the middle of the road and shit. You know, so like it's, it's, you know, there's pros and cons to living on the island, living in diaspora and stuff like that, which I'm, I feel like is similar to living, you know, on res and off res um, for you guys. So, um, you know, I get that it can be intimidating and everything, but I think as long as people come with good intentions, you know, um, mm-hmm. You should be good. Yeah. And while you're reconnecting, um, another thing, don't try to be sitting there being a know-it-all. Mm-hmm. It's your time to be a student. It's your time. It, it's mm-hmm. it's a beautiful thing if you let it. But it could also be your most biggest struggle if you don't. Mm-hmm. Because I know the younger generations are, you know, they're all about knowing they ought, they want to know right now but within di- within our indigenous cultures you have to sit and wait until you're actually ready for some teachings right like like when you get your 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 moon cycle for the first time like sure we talk about it and everything but you don't fully learn what that's about until you get your moon time same with with a with a man when he, he becomes a man he'll get teachings up into that point, but there's only certain and so many that he can get. And then once he becomes that man, then he learns the rest. So it's, it's, it's learning humility. It's learning patience. It's learning respect and it's relearning. It's learning kindness and being able to be present. Mm-hmm. And, a lot, a lot of these these ones that are reconnecting, they they really, really don't want to do that. And I'm like, well, it's a process. It's not. You're not going to learn everything in one. Like I don't even know everything, right? Like I I've been around my people for almost 40 years now. Like this month I'll be 40, and I, I've been in it for 40 years, and I still don't know everything. So, for somebody to come in and say that, that kind of makes you and stop like what and it really makes you question that person so it's just best if you come with respect right and that just like I think is a testament to people treating reconnecting more like um, having like a more consumerist mindset with it because you know capitalism and colonization all that rather than you know um, really genuinely reconnecting you know like you said they want to just like rush they're they're so used to 
you know, in the age of information, everything really is at your fingertips. You can learn a lot very quickly. Um, but being able to turn around and pair it, something that you read, isn't the same thing as like, um, you know, um, it's people like it's a community. Um, you come into a certain circumstance and that's when a teaching What's that saying when the student is ready, the teacher will come, you know, um, and it's not necessarily a person, you know, it can be multiple people in just a given circumstance. That's when it was time for you to learn a given, a given thing. I don't know um, if y'all are picking up what I'm laying down, but mm -hmm. um, people just are impatient. And um, like you said, uh, they can have a know-it-all attitude and, and it's more from a sense of like um, a, a superiority complex kind of thing. Like they they feel like they need to prove themselves because imposter syndrome, they are disconnected, whatever the case may be, you know, and I understand it comes from a place of trauma because like you said earlier, there are people who had to hide who they were for X, Y, Z reason all over the, the map, regardless of where their um, ancestors are indigenous to. So like, it's a really complicated uh, conversation, but like... I don't know, man. I feel like no matter what culture you come from, you know, there's there's an understanding of history that needs to be there. Um, an understanding that blood quantum really ain't shit and you really want, need to focus more on lineage and who your people are and stuff like that, your family. Um, yeah. And contributing to the community too. It's not just like, oh, I found this community like that. Um, well, let me not name names. Let me shut up and not uh, do that. But, um, you know, there's people that are like, oh, look, I have this, or I enrolled here, I have this card or whatever, you know, so I'm officially indigenous. It's like, uh, no, let me stop you right there. That's not, that's not how that works. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. That's another thing too. Even some people who have the card and they're like, flash, look at this. It's like, okay, good. What are you gonna do with that? What are you going to do with mm -hmm. it? What you is that card going to do for you? <laughs> <laughs> Just get brownie points. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Chris? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to invite her back know. up. But I, I, I fully I know some internet. indigenous people who are, who are card holders and they don't know nothing. Right. I so mean, having an indigenous right. status card or a tribal card doesn't give you the authorization or the, you know, exactly. I'm all big and bad. Right. And don't get me started on. It was. Don't get me started on like people that are older. And so you would think that they would be knowledgeable, right? That they would have an understanding of things and they're out here like teaching completely outdated information and you know it's like bro um those are the people that you're like in the age of information how do you not not know this and like you be coming to meetings and everything too like get it together folks so older doesn't mean elder i can't put enough right. this on that because there's people older than me out here so with my grandma my my, my tamma always explained to me, and she explained this to me when I was just a little girl, because there were some some people that were really mean in the community, and they, they didn't they didn't act like a normal elders, right? So what she would say is she'd be uh, chanting, and I'd be like, what? She'd tell me, there's a difference between an elder and a, just an old person. Mm -hmm. She goes, the elders will sit there and take the time to teach you if you want it but you have to ask and you're going to go and you're going to talk to old people and some of those old people are going to snub you off right but an elder will always make sure that you get the information you need yeah. so even if they have to go searching for it because my 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 tama, my grandma she had to go searching for information for me right like even though they're they're elders, they're they're still learning too. Well, we're all learning until the day we die. But yeah, the difference between an old person and an elder is one that'll teach you, 
and come at you with respect and humility, you know, teach you all the good morals and everything. And then you just have an old person who's just grumpy and he just, bye. <laughs> Still show the respect, but bye. Yeah. It's, it's one of those that- moments, I've been in moments where I just had to smile and nod and be like, okay, this person is saying this information, but I don't want to be disrespectful and call them out in front of all these people. Um, so <sighs> I got a story for you. Mm. I had a person call me a see you next Tuesday oh. in the middle of the hall. <laughs> Cause no, I asked her if she wanted a plate of food. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> How dare and you? The ones that, like, you cuss them out and they're like, Oh, I am your elder. And it's like, okay, but bitch. Yeah, and she said that to me, and I'm like, so just standing there with a plate of food. I'm like, okay, does anybody else want this plate of food? <laughs> like, never mind then, bitch. Starve then. Yeah. My grandma kicked her underneath the table. I was just trying to help table. you, Auntie. <laughs> yeah, my, my tama, she kicked her underneath the table. She kicked her right in the leg. <laughs> she was so mad. Ay, ay, ay. But, yeah. That's so funny. <laughs> <coughs> so I, what, there, I figured oh, when, like, when it comes to, starve. <laughs> what I'm sorry who said what I missed it oh I was just reading a comment oh gotcha I knew that well I was gonna oh you're you're muted Sarah <laughs> oops I was just reading Penelope's. She's like, offering food's not allowed. I guess not. <laughs> so I didn't know if um, either of you ladies wanted to talk more about like the process of reconnecting and what a person would essentially have to do to claim a nation versus saying that they're like descended like I have ancestry from here but I don't necessarily have proof of lineage and no one's claimed me and da 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 so when it comes to the nations I know it's mostly our nations that claim you our people have to claim you Mm -hmm. um and that's because we have a lot of people that come in that just aren't good people And sometimes there's certain people within our community, like me, who don't see it or who were blinded to it, right? Right. And then you have your elders that come in and they watch these people. They're always watching. Yeah, they And they will tell you yes or no. Yeah. So I've been on, on the receiving end of that going, nope, we can't. I'm like, okay. But, yeah. It, claiming it is like it's not as hard as it seems right like mm-hmm. claiming a nation having a nation claim you um right it means that they know part of who your people are like who your grandma was or your great grandma you know there's people from 60 scoop that don't know that are starting to get reconnected and they're starting to find those family lines right? So it's finding those family lines and knowing where it is you belong within the nation because up here we have the nation and then we have individual reserves, right? So to come back to our people, we need to know who your family is, like which bloodline you come from that family because there's usually two bloodlines to every family, right? So it's finding out that and, um, And then going from there to find out which reserve you're on, like which reserve your, our people were, you know, your people were placed, stuff like that. Thank you for um, bringing that up because um, I'm actually going to New York in May to officially meet. Well, I'm going to get lip filler, but I'm also going to be meeting um, my grandma on my dad's side because I, I know my lineage on my mom's side which 
goes way, way back, you know? Like, my grandfather, he passed away when he was 109, and he still had all his teeth in wow. his walk. And, you know, he, he would talk to me about that, you know? <laughs> she said he's very all his teeth. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're good. But, um, you know, I'm actually really excited because that's the side that, like, I really, you know, I really want to go down because I have more relatives that are, like, still alive, you know, and that could tell me more. I'm, I'm just excited, though, to go over there. So, and it's, it's a, it's, it is an exciting thing because learning, learning those lines is something to value, right? Like learning what lines of people that you come from, which lines of family that you come from instills a pride like no other. Like I can, I can say who my great, great grandmother was, right? I can say what my traditional last name was in English because I can't say it in Okanagan because it's just, or in Skalikchen because it's just too difficult and I won't say it because I mess it up every time. But I know I come from the clapping hands line, right? That's what, this tattoo is that's clapping hands right mm -hmm. i'm getting the other one on this arm for both my lines but it's really like it's it's people think it's really difficult to have a nation want to claim you but if you really think about it are all of our nations all of our tribes everybody we want our people to come home because our numbers are really low like, we want our people to come home. We just need to find where, where you're supposed to be. Like, we want to help you exactly. find your people. And if you're going to be like, well, I don't know, and you, you don't want to put in any of the work, then they're going to be, no. Well, if you're not going to put in the work, why are we going to put in the work? We're not going to do this for you. This is your journey. Well, the thing is, I know my dad, my father was connected to his indigeneity. Um, I just, he passed away when I was locked up and I don't know, you know, my mom, she gives me misinformation. She says Cherokee, but there's like that. I don't know where that comes from, but that's why I want to meet, you know, my grandmother so I can get the correct info and learn more, you know, cause he, he passed away on the island. He was, you know, really bad alcoholic, but I'm sorry. You know, um, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but I mean, with him passing was really great for me because that's when I started meeting that side of my family, which was in 2020 during the pandemic. I met, I have two older brothers that I met, and I also have a sister that I have, I still haven't been able to find. And I don't know, this has been a, a huge learning thing for me. Uh, one thing I do, I can say as a reconnecting um indigenous woman is I, I i'm afraid to speak on indigenous like info and most of the time i will redirect somebody to somebody else who knows or i will you know if they're taino i'll be like you know i'll send them to taino libraries website you know and just learning to be humble and knowing your place especially when you're reconnecting is probably the most important thing Mm -hmm. For me, it's been because when you come from a place that is, like, full of self and ego, all you're doing is driving people away from you. You're driving people from not wanting to reconnect, and you spread misinformation very easily. Like, the other day, when I was watching a live, and there was a whole bunch of people saying that everybody's reconnecting, and that, to me, was very upsetting, because I'm like, how is an elder reconnecting? Why would they be elders if they're reconnecting? And it's just, if to me that comes from a place of ego, yeah, and it's it's annoying. You you hit the nail on the head. That's what it is. It's it's like, it's coming, one hundred percent from a place of ego. And you know, see, that's another thing that irks me is people are like, well, everybody's reconnecting. Um, no, no, everybody <laughs> is learning. However, there are a lot of us that grew up in the culture and to say that we're reconnecting when we're in it is, yeah. is a little harmful. Yeah, that's what I right? Too. 
but I get trying to, you know, maybe they couldn't find the wording or whatever. I don't know. But I don't even like the term reconnecting. I don't either. Yeah. I like learning. Yeah. Like, yeah. We don't we don't walk around in our communities and be like, you see that one? That one's real connected, that one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I went around and I'm like, bro. <laughs> Right. So connected. My sister called me stupid in that one one and she's like, You're stupid. I'm like, okay, don't ask my sister anything. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, I I come from the idea of we're all connected. That's why you come home. Mm -hmm. You're not reconnecting. You're already connected. You were born connected. Mm -hmm. And like Is it like Wi Fi? People don't understand, like, you can be a quote-unquote connected person and still be disconnected from your teachings. Yeah. yeah. That part. And still do things that go against your teachings. You can be a quote-unquote exactly. reconnecting person and be very disconnected from community. And, and in some cases, like, I, I see people who find out that they're Indigenous and then use it as a shield to just run around and do all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah. And then when, when it comes time to take accountability for the things that they've said and the things that they've done to people, they hide behind that shield of indigeneity. And they're like, you can't say anything to me because that's anti-indigenous. And it's like, okay, so where do you come from? You can't ask me that because that's anti-indigenous. Well, who are your people? You can't ask me that because that's triggering. Like, it comes to a point where we're we're defending ourselves for asking simple community questions. Yes. That we would ask anybody. Like the first time I met Sarah, we didn't even get along when me and Sarah first met. We we were like arguing what? over something. <laughs> and then as we started talking to each other, and then she started telling me like who her family was. And then I'm telling her who my family is. I'm like, what the fuck? Your brother protested with us for like a month, bro. I fed your dad. I fed your brother and your, your cousins for a month. <laughs> and my dad. Like, it's my back. Oh yeah, yeah. Your dad, you know, both yeah. of our lives. <laughs> and I'm like, so this is Sarah. Holy shit. Okay, I know you. <laughs> but like, like that's shy. When when we say. Um, and and I've, I've had people come at me for even using this term, but when we say Indian country is small, Indian country is fucking small. It is. That's and what and that's what people don't understand. When I've told people, naive, it's like, let me shut up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I, I've said it a million times. Like, if you're not from the res and you're not connected to a res, you don't understand what Indian country means. And people get offended by the term and they're like, who even says that? Why would somebody say Indian country? We're not Indians. Okay, slow your roll, bro. Slow your roll. Because every one of our treaties is signed with Indians. And like in my community, the old people still refer to themselves as Indian. Because they come from a time where wording was really important. So... If we start to steer away from the wording in those treaties and we start using different words that the government gave to us, because let's face it, none of us are indigenous, none of us are aboriginal, none of us are native. Those are not words we gave to ourselves. Nope. Those, those were words that the government decided were politically correct. So when we start using those terms... We're changing the wording that's that's in the treaty. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of the older people in my community are like. If we keep using the words that are in the treaty, they have to stand by those treaties. So I'm not one that finds offense in, in wording, really. Um, I will point out to people, like, by the way, you know, um, we're not Indian because that's not the country we come from. And And to me, I'm like, I don't find it offensive to be called Indian because I don't find being Indian offensive. Me but it's just not who I am because that's not my people. Yeah. See me, I find it offensive depending on the situation. Like over here we get called a 
a lot of names. Yeah. Um, like dirty Indian stuff like that. So it it depends on how they're saying it. And if it's somebody who's being like respectful and stuff like that, I'll tell them, you know, I don't genuinely like being called an Indian. Like I understand why you're saying it, but I prefer to be called this. Yeah. Like, I prefer to be called like Skin. Said, I don't mind it when it comes from when it comes from other indigenous people, I'm like, like skin no skin. But when it comes from white people, I'm like, you better back the fuck up. Yeah. 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 I people mm-hmm. ask me about that at work too. Like, do you prefer to be called native or Indian? I was like, well, I know the older generation, especially since my grandma's aim, uh, I know like she has no problem with it. But like how Sarah says, like I personally, I don't. I, don't like it. I understand, especially for Lakota people. Like, we even have a collective called Indian Collective, Indian, Indian, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's just down the street from me. So I'm starting to you know see like how. Um, Especially like the older generation works and what they're finally forming on, and they kind of back that word. But it's not, you know, not from India, just ND, Indian. Indian, yeah. And I don't think people realize how old that term is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, we've been NDN since the 80s. <laughs> well, that's because people don't understand their history, and it's, it's not anyone's fault. But at the same time, after you get so old and, you know, again, it's 2023, there's a lot available for free online now. You know, you do have a certain degree of responsibility yourself to, you know, put in some work. And in doing so, eventually you stumble upon the right people who they're either your people or they help you find your people. Yeah. Yeah. So, hi everyone. I just I I hijacked Gigi's seat for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because it, it's it's approaching my bedtime. Um, so for people who don't know me, my name is Kay Akiroma Alogi. I'm a medicine carrier for my people. I'm Taino. Um, my family's from Borinquen, from Hayuya, Adjuntas, Mayawes, and I'm in Lenape, Hoking, and Canarsie Territory here in New York. Um, so I just want to say that this is beautiful. All of you, my relatives, I don't know how you identify as uh, female identifying or not, but all of you are very beautiful, very wise. Thank you for sharing and educating and, and all of that. I 100% agree with all the stuff you were saying and um I just wanted to jump up here because this is something that I often talk to uh, Taino Library about um, and, and you know, something that I consistently am always trying to teach our, our people. Um, you can't separate your spirituality from your indigeneity. And that's another, like, big part of it. And, yeah. like, when I keep hearing you guys referencing teachings, I just want to kind of, like, uh, uh, what's the word I'm for, expand on that on a little bit that that often refers to for people who are not familiar with that kind of language, that means spiritual teachings often. Um, And because there's a lot of people trying to reconnect and they're just like reading books and they're doing all these things and they're running around, but you cannot be an indigenous person and not practice your spirituality and separate your spiritual knowledge and the importance of ceremony and understanding that community is ceremony and understanding the importance of community and the roles that we all play in building, maintaining, and creating, keeping community, um, you know, like to the point of adopting people, helping people find community, helping people find their lineage, how important all of that is and how it relates to what it really means to be an Indigenous person. And a lot of mm-hmm. people forget that or they, they think it's not as important or they don't need to be grounded in their spirituality. That's something they're going to come back to later. The old people have been here before time. Time is not linear. And they keep, they are here. They are waiting. Anybody who wants to come home can come home. But you have to do the work. And doing that work of doing the teachings, asking the questions, and all of that is all, um, you know, all part of it. And that even applies to the spirituality where people will come to me and want something and then um you know not come to me with saying are you free at this time 
can you make time to talk to me about this as if I'm supposed to accommodate and move my whole schedule around for them. I, I, I'm not the one who's in need. They, they are the one who's coming to me because they need something and people misunderstand that and understand that like medicine carriers or anybody who has a title or has something that you need or you want to whatever, you're seeking us. You have to come to us and let us know, you know, where, where you are and, you know, what's in your heart and we will figure out like how, how to move forward. And it's just like, I see too many people like both on and off the app that are reconnecting and they totally just like bypass the spirituality component. Yeah. And, you know, and it's something that I talk a lot about with our reconnecting Taino. And I even, I make a lot of book recommendations that are written like from like um, our relatives, like our people up in Canada and our other relatives across Turtle Island that like read what they're saying, listen to how they speak, spend time with them because we are reconnecting in a different way where like we even have to relearn to understand what it means to be indigenous. And you only learn that by being in community and being with other people who haven't lost as much culture as, as we have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can tell the difference between someone like Taino library, who's been on her journey for a really long time and how she speaks versus other folks. And so it's just something that, you know, for, everyone who's in here just to really like you cannot separate your spirituality from your indigeneity when you are an indigenous person you you just can't okay. it's like telling a jew like it, like i lack of better um comparison i can't it's like i said it's, it's late here <laughs> <laughs> um that it's like you know being jewish is like a religion and a culture and a race and all of these like very like specific like weird place of existence but that's what being indigenous is you you can't like those customs and and traditions and ceremony are so aligned with the belief system there's a reason that i have a very soft spot for lakota people are the star people you know like there's a there's a um that's crazy yeah there's very very um I feel like she's from Rosebud but like I could be wrong no okay I can't see if it's Pine Ridge or not I think it's Pine Ridge flag oh oh well I was trying to see but um no so just like that's what I was I wanted to jump up here to to say because I think all of you are saying really really beautiful things and just to clarify like teachings generally means like spiritual teachings and like those things are so so important and you know, for us, those are things that we are still like reestablishing, reconnecting to, and trying to um, put together. And, you know, it's sad that for us, a lot of our ceremony and things, it's like wrapped up in, in so much stuff. And we're looking at books and trying to pick apart what we see in books with what we know, like this person's family and that person's family still does and what was passed down and where the similarities are to trying to like, decode what's left for us because you know it, it's just it's just an awful situation for everybody but really just you can't not be grounded in your spirituality and and talking about being a reconnecting person talking about being indigenous because that you just can't separate them so that was my little soapbox moment for the day well, you and if you're not ground that way. Oh, she did a pretty good job. Like, uh, like to be honest, if I could even make out like a book like that, that's what I would what I have said too is a lot of spirituality. Like, um, in my way, we have seven virtues, so you always have to live by that. And that's like one thing my elders like always taught me is that that's how we as Lakota, Lakota people, you know, should live every day. Followed by uh, follow these virtues, which yeah. is like humility, you know, stuff like that. So I like what, how you said everything about spirituality because I kind of forgot that it's more than just uh, the teachings that I get from my elders. But I've been through like a lot of ceremonies and uh, I really love our culture. So <clears throat> me being a pipe carrier and stuff, like 
like if it was the old days and I see people like trying to disrespect my title, it would cause like a <laughs> a war, I guess. I mean, that's a and it's a big deal. I wish I wish that people understood what it meant to be a pipe carrier because it is a big deal. Yeah. It is a really big deal, and you know, blessings, many blessings. So, you know, yeah. But no, I see, I see. I was starting to look at the comments. Elba, I'm sorry, you were saying something. Oh, no, I was going to say that um, to your point, as far as like being grounded in, in your teachings and spirituality, um, you know, if you're not grounded in your spirituality, then you should not be teaching, you know, because there's people who not only are they teaching, but they're, you know, they have uh behike or whatnot in the title of their social media handle or whatever. And they, they are not, they're, they're, um, for lack of a better way to put it, bad medicine. Mm -hmm. So you really got to be careful. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, that's why in a lot of cultures, um, your hair is something that you take care of. You don't let anyone just touch your head or braid your hair and do stuff like that because you just don't know what it is that they have, that they're carrying and that they are going to, you know, inadvertently or not attached to you. So you just mm -hmm. got to, you got to be, you got to be really careful and really, um, Use discernment. Mm -hmm. I mean, even even to that point, to to further that point along, people like people take it lightly. Like when you tell them, like you know, you really shouldn't be teaching things about spirituality, or you shouldn't be doing uh, things for people if you haven't been taught, you know, taught about it. Because doing the doing this work, it, it's not easy work. You are consistently giving of yourself every single time you go into a ceremony or you do something for someone or whatever it is, you are consistently giving of yourself because that's how it works. There is nothing that happens in this universe for free. Energy is a consistent exchange. You are consistently giving back out into the universe, back into the old people as you are asking the old people and the ancestors, everyone that walks with you to give to you in order to do whatever it is that you are doing in that moment. And so there's a lot of people who will read cards or do different things. And they're like, Oh, I do all this thing. Everyone can carry medicine. Everyone can have some type of medicine, some type of gift, something that they offer and give to the community. Someone who's an herbalist, someone who cooks really great meals and can gather people at the home and creates community and creates a loving environment. That is a form of medicine. That is community. That is healing and treating people. You know, but and then but then there's like the spiritual work, which is different. And that, you know, that's not things to mess with. And everyone just thinks it's cool. It, it's, you know, it, it's like the fan thing, but it's not this glamorous thing. It is hard work. It is sacrificing work. It is something that takes a lot out of you and you have to consistently be ready, be ready to give and be prepared Um you know, be prepared to give. So yeah, all of that, all of those, all of those things, just to adding into like, as reconnecting people, people who are learning, traveling down the red road and understanding that it's not like there are certain things you just can't do and play with. And, you know, just, just be patient, just be patient. Not everybody has to be the chief. Not everyone has to be the medicine carrier, the, the, you know, whatever, the council person, I'm trying to think of things, you know, <laughs> and because, because, th because that's part of being indigenous, whether or not you have a title, you have a place in community, you serve a form yes. and function in community, There's a role. being disabled, or, you know, or being neurodivergent, all of these different things, like, and that's an indigenous mindset. And that's something that I'm always trying to teach people that you need to learn and understand that you don't have to have a title to have a seat at the quote unquote table because it's a circle. It's not a hierarchy. Real, yeah. truly indigenous beliefs and practice and how you see things is, is in a circle that we all have a place and leaders can shift at different times. You need a different leader for a different thing, but we all have a role. We are all community. We are all family. We all have to learn how to come in and help each other and be there and support each other. But if we're all busy trying to be somebody with a title or feeling that that's the only place we have importance, we're really 
not taking the time to look at ourselves and sit with ourselves and understand what we have to offer everyone being being our own person you know and that's something that we could miss out as a community as a collective not getting to experience you in your truest form and you may not grow as a person in the same way because you are not letting people see who you really are so there are lots of different ways to be a warrior and they don't always all include carrying a spear and there are lots of ways to give medicine that don't include being a medicine carrier and there are lots of ways to lead without being a chief so that that is my ted talk for the evening (laughs) (laughs) you nailed it (laughs) That is my TED talk for the evening. So I will, but it was lovely seeing you all. I have like a love hate relationship with with the internet. So like <laughs> nobody nobody really. I think we me. all do. But um, I again just wanted to say thank you. I really love everything everybody's been saying, and I hope you all have a good night. Yeah, you too. You too. Thank you for coming up and talking to us. <laughs> but um. I didn't know if you uh, guys wanted to talk a little bit more, um, expand on uh, enrollment versus like non-status and what that means. Cause I know that kind of plays into like the whole reconnecting, uh, connecting whatever conversation, but it's also like a separate thing as yeah. well, if that makes any sense. Oh, I got a car. Sorry. So like I like with um uh who the other people that don't have like a enrollment card I do but I I don't know ever, ever since getting on this app I've been learning about um the other tribes they all don't have an enrollment but I'm not gonna deny their indigeneity you know like it's something like that so that's definitely not my spot and so I I just be try to be you know so loving- um. Huh? Oh, sorry. Oh no, go ahead. Uh, what did you die? <laughs> Are you uh, showing me that she has body connection? Got that McDonald's Wi-Fi. <laughs> Uh, I'm probably the only one here that's not enrolled. Yeah, that's like what I wanted to touch base on mine. So like uh, coming across you, getting to know you that I just don't even care about my card. Like I just rather just um, indigenous is indigenous. No, not. Nope. I don't see no card. Like I just leave mine alone. <laughs> yeah. Um. And like with with me, I'll never be able to be enrolled. My people, um, so uh, southern natives don't have enrollment, so yeah, there's places where there's no like federal recognition or enrollment yeah. or anything like that. Well, I mean, uh, southern, yeah, southern natives from where I come from, I know that you guys do, um, Puerto Rico, right? You guys have enrollment, yeah, yeah there's enrollment, my... but we're not, so there's no. And you're not the only Hi, unaffiliated person either yes, because um, Hi, Brio, Brio. I actually Brio, Brio. wanted uh, Brio, Brio, Brio. to bring Inaru up because um, she is an unaffiliated Taino person because a lot of the times people get, um, you know, uh, defensive and whatnot if somebody, you know, mentions like, hey, who are your people? Where are you enrolled? Are you enrolled with anyone? Stuff like that. Um, and Inaru is someone who has like put in years of work. Like if, if anybody were to deny her, her indigeneity, they'd be just ridiculous and dumb. Like, I don't know if she considers herself an elder, but I consider her an elder. Like she's one of my favorite people. So there's that. And that's awesome. Um, when I first, um, before I got started talking to everybody and, um, there was this one comment section that was pretty hateful about, um, you know, card, you know, enrollment and another indigenous person. And that's how I came across her because she said that she even knew my grandma. So I was like, what? <laughs> so I was like pretty surprised <laughs> about that. <laughs> so that's how me and her came across each other. 
Nice. Yeah, that was pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, that's that 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 was really cool. Um, that uh, you know, uh, I I came across. I mean, it wasn't cool how we first met because yeah. you know you were you, people were being unkind towards you and and everything, and I really didn't appreciate, it, especially like since your grandma was like you know such a I I mean played a huge pivotal role in you know. Um, you know, some actions, especially the most recent with uh, Standing Rock and, and things of that nature. And I, I had the privilege of meeting with her, um, uh, Miss uh, Regina Brave. And um, yeah, here Aww. in the hook in where I live. So yeah. 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 Uh, Photo Liberation Day was just uh, last week. And the on deliberation, like the gym and everything, you see pictures of like my grandma, like at uh, one day in the 1970s. And that's one of the, she's one of the well-respected elders in our community. So, as, you know, she plays a major role like in the Oglala community and other, whoever she meet, meets, cause she's always traveling. She's an older person, but she drives around in her van. She still makes her <laughs> appearances, she's there. Like she doesn't even have a cell phone, but she's out there traveling doing the work uh, like off of social media. <laughs> so yeah, but that was awesome though. <laughs> like we said, Indian country is small. Mm -hmm. People yeah, really don't. It was really small because like, she, like uh, whenever she told me um, uh, her where she's from, I was like, you, you heard of my grandma? I was like, we're way up here, you can kind of, down there, so I was just like, I was really surprised. So I really love that. Yeah, especially like you know, um, when you when you come across matriarchs, so it's just powerful matriarchs like that. I mean, it's just something to aspire to be, and you know, you hope that uh, you can be, you know, I guess make such an impact within the community as yeah. well. So um, definitely, your grandma is an inspiration. And you're an inspiration. I love what you know you do too, uh, yeah. online. So thank you very much for for being us with us today for our Taino talk, and thank you Elba for the introduction. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what was the second? Uh, what was the next topic? Because like, Auden is not in, enrolled, but I am. So like, I just start like coming on to Native Talk. Like I had a um start like not even asking for travel and like don't even show me that just put it away like just tell me like where you <laughs> come from <laughs> like crazy family so see it up here the laws are they're really finicky about that kind of stuff but for the most part most of us in community we don't we don't go by that we go by for for my people for in skeleton speaking people we go by uh who is wanting to learn, right? Like we don't, we don't care if you have a card, right? My band is like my, my nation is moving more towards um, our own uh, membership codes and everything. Um, nice. Yeah. So we're going to figure that out and just basically take it out of the hands of the government and they can't tell us who our people are and who they aren't. So we were trying to do that, and this is the, the issue we keep running into is that we have a split community. So we have our traditional council, and then we have our elected council. The elected council doesn't want to let go of the jurisdiction over our band list because that's where the money is. The money is in the people. And our traditional council... Mom? will effectively remove mom, status mom, mom. from almost half of our people in the community <laughs> because they're registered under a father instead of under a mother. Mom. See out here, yes, it's maybe. different. They're, they're not looking to take it away. They're looking to add on to it. So if we get our membership code up, because we've been watching you guys. We've been watching. We know. Been taking pointers from Shy's, Shy's Nation. <laughs> everybody does i'm telling you <laughs> they'll be like yeah. we're protesting let's dig up a road six nations is a blueprint 
Yeah. Yeah, no, so... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. My bad. No, no, go ahead. No, you're good. You go. I was just going to joke around. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to add that, like, as far as, like, Daino are concerned, um, like, Odin was speaking on... Um, <clears throat> excuse me, like Odin was speaking on, we don't uh, have federal recognition um, in some, uh, like, I guess more like local uh, or state-like, um, like, I think it's the Virgin Islands. Yeah, I want to say it's the Virgin Islands that has recognition for Taino people. And um, we have Yucayekeno or like chiefdoms and stuff like that, um, but they're not like federally recognized or anything. Some are Some are pretty big though. Um, and you don't have to be enrolled in a Yukayeke to be able to like, you know, be legitimately Daino and claim being Daino. But there is, like I was saying, work and, and, um, you know, learning at the feet of elders and all that good stuff that you should be doing before you're like claiming a nation and all of that, claiming to be Daino rather. Um, I don't know if uh, Inaru, in, blah, 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 Inaru would like to elaborate a little bit more on that for for the Taino people in the in the chat. Um, yes, um, for specifically for the Taino people, um, it's always good to kind of like. Um, I mean, I think we've we've talked about this a lot, but it's always good to kind of repeat it and revisit this. You know, um, I've mm. been on my uh, journey for quite some time, almost as long as I've been an adult, you know, and uh, just kind of like, and this is like pre-internet um, and things of that nature. And, and just, it's, uh, and, and also piggyback on what Water Vixen was saying. To Uh-oh. Did her phone die? Oh, wait. I came in, I'm sorry, I came in, <laughs> yeah, it's almost dead, but um, I came in late in the conversation a little bit, but to piggyback on what Water Vixen was saying, it's like, you know, um, it's also very important if you don't, you know, meet up with like Dino people, like within your um, physical community, like it's really great to, you know, learn online and everything like that, but it's nothing like just being in person with folks. And if they... Yeah live in an area like myself where there's not a lot of people who um you know kind of like uh are walking you know or taking that journey and walking in that reconnecting road um you know then what you could do is you can also f um you know find community with other native folks um I live in an area where there's a lot of um, Native folks in diaspora from all over, um, you know, all over, like, Turtle Island and everything. So, so, you know, we'll have, like, community dinners or events. I mean, we'll find things to do. Like, oh. like even with this, like, you know how we're all talking on this live and stuff like that? Sometimes we'll have a Zoom meeting or we'll just, like chop it up like over somebody's house having some tea and stuff like that I mean it doesn't have to be anything official but just like having conversation and talking and exchanging ideas and you know um, respecting you know other other nations protocols and, and things of that nature and like learning about other people that also will um, enhance and help your yourself to know better to know better how to to be, you know, a very good relative, you know, um, cause that's, that's what we should just strive for. Uh, it's really great to, to, I mean, I have a whole bunch of books and everything like that, but it's just nothing like just, like I said, chopping it up with somebody, you know, hanging out and, you know, um, having coffee and stuff like that. So. Um, that's what I encourage, especially if you're not in an environment like, um, a lot of us in diaspora from the Caribbean are kind of like centered around, maybe we might be in like in New York city, like one of those big cities and stuff like that. We might be in Florida. There's a lot of big Taino communities there and things, but again, it doesn't hurt to go to a powwow 
you know, and go to like, don't, don't feel like because the other folks are not, you know, part of the, you know, um, that are not Taino or part of you, your Yuka Yeke or something like that, that you don't, you can't like talk to them or you can't really associate with them. You know, they may have different ways. They may dress different. They may have different regalia, but, you know, um, still, still find, um, that common ground, that commonality and, um, yeah, be a good relative. Like I mentioned before. Keep on doing that. I hope I answered that question. Did I answer that question? Taino library. (laughs) Sounded good to me. (laughs) Sounded good to me. And, and also I don't, I don't consider myself to, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, I consider myself more of a spicy auntie. Uh, maybe uh, yes. A spicy titi. I'm just going to say most elders, though. Most elders do not see themselves as an elder. They don't. She's an elder. So are you. Whatever. If I'm your <laughs> elder, Lord help you. Creator help you. Uh, what was the another converse what a, a not conversation topic so um when it comes to matrilineal versus blah, 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 matrilineal versus patrilineal lineage um i thought that was something worth uh bringing up as well because um for some communities it doesn't matter for some communities it does um who wants to go first Well, don't everyone jump up at once. Sorry, Abel's being wild. <laughs> everyone, stop talking. I can barely hear y'all. So my people are matrilineal. Um, we go by the woman. But it's not what a lot of people think for, for my nation. It's more... It's more of like keeping the balance between everybody, right? Um, we go by the woman. So it's like for me, my grandmother was um tonight my other grandmother was well tonight has been uh skill and the other grandmother was uh spoken skill. So because I have both of those grandmothers, I can go from both of those lines. So I crave all three. Yeah. And because it's my mother that's from our party, I can claim that. But if I was a boy, I'd have to claim different. Sorry, I'm cooking. You're good. You're good. I'm trying to like, I'm having an ADHD moment because I'm trying to respond to, to to Chris in the comments. You know what? Let me just. I can just talk. Um, hold on. Where'd her comment go? Olive Garden, listening in. Okay, you're good. You're good. <sighs> but like traditionally speaking, the women would make most of the decisions for. Mm-hmm. The um, but it's not just one-sided. Like they would listen to to everybody, and they would make the decision based on what's best for everybody, not just what's best for women. Um, exactly. And a lot of people on this app seem to think that um, when we say matriarchal, it's just about women, and it, it's not. Um, for patriarchal, I don't really know because I don't come from a community that's that's like that. Um, I know they tried to make us that way, and we're defiant, so it didn't work. Hey. But, <laughs> but 
but yeah so that's usually how it goes for us um and the women um are are held in the highest regard because they give birth they give birth to our people and we believe in the three the three generation like um if you're pregnant you have your baby in your belly okay but you also come from your grandmother uh-huh. so because your mom was in her belly while you were still in hers like it's it's a weird way to i can't describe it properly but it's a, a three generation thing i mean it's biology by yeah it's biology essentially but it was one of the biggest teachings that we had that so that way that you would respect your your mother and your daughter and everybody the same way you would respect your grandmother. Yep. Taino people are also um matriarchal. Um we don't we don't go by like oh you're only only people whose mothers our descendants can can claim, you know, Taino. We don't do that, but um, I know there are people who do, and some people who you know go by the father's side and who their nation is. Yeah, but see, like that's the thing too. Like we we kind of do go by that, but then again, we don't because we're more equalarian than anything, right? Um, our men certain lines, but it's majorly women that carry the household and all that job. Well, I mean, it just, it makes, it makes sense too, because even before we had like test tubes and stuff like that, you know, you know who your kid is when you give birth to it, the, the paternity of the child. Um, it's a little bit more, it's easier to question, you know? And usually it's the mother that's teaching the language, teaching, you know, telling stories and stuff at bedtime and stuff like that. So, you know, it kind of just makes sense to me. I don't, I don't know. For us back in the I day, it was like strictly matrilineal. Huh? What? Um, My is strictly matrilineal. Like, if your mom does not have a nation and clan with us, you don't have a nation and clan with us. But with that being said, there are exceptions. So if somebody has a parent who is not Haudenosaunee, like their mother, their mother's not, so she doesn't have a nation, she doesn't have a clan, but the father does, the women in the father's clan, or any clan really for that matter, but the, the women can decide to take that person in. And we call it taking taking them under the wing or like teaching them the ways. And they do this naming ceremony that we because we only name our people um twice a year like in ceremony mm-hmm. do it at home like any time whenever the kid is born you can have a naming ceremony at home but like in community ceremony we only do it twice and um they a part of the ceremony they call it like um hanging the name around the neck like they wear it like a necklace and um and that person belongs to that family and and it's not like like people have really um perverted the wording and made it sound like we own people but that's not the case (laughs) so when we say that person belongs to that family what we're saying we're not saying the family owns that person we're saying that that person is part of that family so when we say this woman took this person in and hung a name around their neck, that person belongs to that woman. That person becomes that woman's child, regardless of age. So like if I took in a person that was 10 years older than me and I adopted them and I gave them like I hung a name around their neck, they become my, my child. Hmm. And then when, when that happens, they say at the end of it, they say, and we don't speak of it again, which means... Um, that person is never supposed to, nobody should ever go to that person and say, you can't say this because you're adopted. And those lines that come from that adopted person belong to us. So it's not to say that if you hold lineage and it's not coming from your mother's side that you're you're just done and you don't get to claim lineage. Um, 
there's there's ways to adopt in to our nations Mm -hmm. but it's more than just finding that person and then having somebody claim you and then say running around and saying okay yeah now i'm part of this nation there's a lot of work that goes into that so you you have the responsibility of learning ceremonies learning ceremony times you have the responsibility of seeking out teachings because we're not going to hand them to you. You have to go for them. Um, you have the responsibility of learning what our medicines are. So we have, not only do we have like our, our natural medicines, but we have medicine societies where we have cer- like medicine ceremonies. And part of that is um, learning what those ceremonies entail when you belong to them or when, when they're open ceremonies where it's like ceremonies that you can help with. Um, Cause a good part of our medicine societies are like closed, but they should be. Yeah. We're like, like very strictly matrilineal. So like we've had people who who claim to be part of one of our because we have we have six nations within our nation family, so we have people who claim to be part of our nations. <laughs> okay, and um, and then when we get down to it and and we're asking them like you know who are your people who is your family whatever we find out that the lineage comes from the father's side, and. And then we have to tell that person, like, you actually don't hold lineage, so you can't claim a nation and claim. And and a lot of times what happens is the breakdown. So as soon as that happens, they go straight to, you can't erase who I am. This is my bloodline. This is my family, which is totally true. That is your bloodline. That is your family. And you do, in some way, shape, or form, belong to us, but you just don't hold a nation and a clan. So before we're able to teach them that part, they they kind of just go off and then and then at that point like it's hard to bring people back right like when they feel like they're being um what's the word i'm looking for like jaded and they feel like they're being invalidated it's really hard to bring that person back and then and then we run into people that are like well you know my dad is from this nation but i'm not allowed to learn about it because I, I like I've heard that from people where they're like, oh, they yeah, they said they're not allowed to, to learn about it because it's on their dad's side. And I'm like, no, like th- she can't claim the nation or whatever. But, you know, they can go learn the, the ceremonies or like, well, he can't say he's part of that clan, but he can learn from somebody. And you know what I'm saying? Like, find you an auntie. What's that? <laughs> I said, find you an auntie. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Will you stop screaming? I mean, the the adoption process sounds, um, we have something similar. um, It's a little different, but similar uh, in Taino culture, which is like, uh, we call it like Watiao, which is um, basically an exchanging of names to kind of establish like we're now, we're now, each other we're now family yeah so um you know i find that really interesting whenever i talk to you guys and you guys talk about like your stories and parts of your process and stuff and it's like yeah we do it you know we do it really similar we we see it in a similar way um you know there's just some differences depending on who's currently colonizing who and all that fun stuff but right and like that we're built to be an inclusive nation. So Mm -hmm. part of our great law, there's a section in our great law that states, well, the way that they read it, it's like he who shall seek shelter under the tree of peace is welcome. Um, So basically what that means is if, if there's a person who is willing to accept the great peace and they want to learn our teachings we're supposed to welcome that person regardless of whether they have a name or not. And, and um, they would sit with my nation. Mm-hmm. The Cuban nation is a nation that takes in the quote unquote outsiders or the, the friends of the nation. Um, but 
when it comes to like our closed practices, those are closed even to some of us. That's what I'm saying. Like a lot of people don't understand that part. Like they get really upset when, when they ask questions, like I've had people come in and into my house and see things, um, from the, like the medicines that I belong to and ask me about it. And I tell them like, I can't tell you because that's, that's a closed practice and have them get upset with me. But I can't even talk about that with my kids because they don't belong to it. And then there's their ceremonies my kids belong to. I can't even help them cook for them because I don't belong to them. Mm-hmm. And that's, so, that's the thing is I, I feel like it comes from entitlement when people get upset, you know, yeah. it's like, yo, if I'm not a Bejique, what do I look like coming on here and talking spirituality stuff? Like right. when Kate was up here, it's like you you say all the spiritual things, get it all off your chest, ma'am. Teach us all the things because like you're a Bahike. That is your place. You know, you've earned that title. So um it's like, dude, I've been reconnecting and connected or whatever you want to call it for however long I have. And even I don't get up on TikTok and start making videos about things that she or other people have taught me you know like who does that right too many people on too many people on this clock app yeah too many people (laughs) and then they get mad at you when you correct them it's like yo you just got here what gets me is the people the people who read the history and then argue with us about the history and I'm like, like, I, I've said to people, um, so people have said to me, like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to refer to the one video. So I did this one video where this guy um, totally mispronounced Iroquois. And I was like, first of all, we don't even like that word. And, um, and I talked about the great peace and how we extended that great peace because we, um, we didn't war with people for territory because we were already utilizing it. And that's what people don't understand. Mm -hmm. Like we have this thing we call the beaver hunting grounds and, and it ended up turning into a a treaty, the beaver hunting grounds treaty or the treaty of Fort Stanwix. And um, the treaty was never about land. Really. The treaty was about exercising our right to occupy the land. We actually never warred over quote unquote territory because we were nomadic nations. We we roamed between certain areas. And um and I had somebody say, well, you know, you've been warring with the Huron for however long, but our peacemaker was a Huron man. Yeah. And then um and then explaining to them like we we didn't obliterate these nations we absorb those nations through marriage and adoption. So a lot of those nations that they say don't exist, exist within my nation because we've adopted those families in and we can't forcibly adopt somebody that have, they have to come on their own volition. And uh, a lot of those families did because then it wasn't, it wasn't that, you know, we were like, beat you down, beat you down. Now, do you want to get adopted? <laughs> you know what I mean? There was a lot <laughs> of at that time and a lot of, and a lot of it was attributed to us when it comes to to a white man's history book when they talk about the the breaking of the nations a lot of that was attributed to my nation because we were we were five nations bound together for one which was un, unheard of for our area um because we were separate nations yes baby you want a drink and we um we occupied such a vast area because we were completely spread out and having that argument with people and then realizing these people are going to Wikipedia and then copying and pasting their arguments to me and, and then trying to argue with me over who people are, because I said like my, my clan mother, she, she actually passed um, during COVID and but she was oh, I'm sorry. a um, she was part of the Wyandotte family that was adopted into our nation, and um, and she still held title in in our in our nation. Like it wasn't it wasn't a big thing. 
but her family retained that nationhood there. They retained that, that wine dot name. And, and I had said that. And she said to me, um, the Hurons and the wine dot aren't the same. And I said, okay, well, since you're Googling, I'm going to let you go ahead and Google where the wine dot come from, because the wine dot came from one of the main families that made up the four Huron nations. And, and then I never heard back from her again. Because when you know what you're looking for, it's easy to find. But when you have no idea what you're looking for and you're just doing a general Google search, you're not going to find the information you're looking for. So when you have somebody who, who knows the history, instead of arguing with them on what you think you know from Google, you need to listen to what that person is saying and take notes because that's the information you're looking for. You're looking for what the relationship is between these nations because the, if you look at the Huron Nation, and I don't even like using that word because it's not a word that they like to use, um, but I don't know how to speak their language, so I don't know how to say their nation names. Yes, baby. Mom. Yeah. Give me mom. Yes, baby, I'm listening. Your iPad, does it need to be plugged in? Sorry. Um, if you look at like the, the dances that they do and they're... We call them socials, but like, like our um, gatherings, they're the same as our songs because we've had that connection with each other for so long. And when we're talking about the, like the, the Confederacy, my, like the uh, Haudenosaunee Confederacy, we've been dated by the white man. We've been dated back to the 1300s. And people are talking to me about things that happened in the 1700s. So what happened in those 1400 years or those 400 years between where you're saying that we've been constantly warring with the Huron Nation, but the Huron Nation is what bound us together. Right? So like, don't think you know everything because you read a white man's book. If you're reconnecting, reconnecting means listening to things with an open mind and a closed mouth. Yes. And you're relearning. Everything that you think you know, you have to relearn. Because the things that we're going to teach you are not things that you're going to find in a book. That part. I mean, there's, there's a saying. I don't know who the originator of the quote is. But it's, um, you know, if you're talking, you're not listening. How can right. you learn? How can you be out here teaching what you don't know? How can you learn if you're running your mouth. <sighs> but people, people insist on doing it anyway. And I mean, there's a difference between sharing what you learn and, um, you know what I mean? Just repeating things. Right. Without having a really, any real understanding of what it is that you're, you're saying. Yeah, you're not sleeping with scissors tonight, crazy. <laughs> yeah, no no scissors. He like, oh man, I don't know where he finds them. He finds scissors no matter where I put them. And I'll come downstairs to wake him up in the morning and there'll be like little bunches of hair all over my floor where he's cut his hair. <laughs> or like I notice the dog's missing a patch of fur on her back or something. Hi. Oh no. Hi. Hi. You see Sarah? Hi. 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 Hi, buddy. How are you? Okay. Scissors is an adventure. <laughs> sure is. Me and him are buddies. Um, yeah, my, my Tama always used to say, Creator gave you two ears to listen. Two, to listen, right? Two eyes to see the truth and one mouth to speak. So use it wisely. In other words, shut the fuck up. Right? Two ears listen and one mouth to shut the hell up. Mm -hmm. Watch and learn. But she didn't like, she didn't cuss cuss at us. But we heard a lot of hells and dams. <laughs> I think I heard her say shit once. <laughs> For us, it's a lot of like puñetas and coños. 
Conyo. You know, I used I thought that my I thought that my name was Conyo for the longest time because I dated <laughs> uh I dated a uh, a Dominican Puerto Rican girl one time and the whole time I was with her my name was Conyo. It wasn't pendejo. It was Conyo. <laughs> <laughs> My auntie, so my aunt's from um from Mexico. I can't remember what nation she is, but they're they're, they're indigenous, but they're from Mexico, like in the Mexican region. And first to all of us as Mijo and Mija. And when I was mm-hmm. a kid, I thought they were calling me Mia, and I'm like, my auntie don't even know my name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why she hey, thinks. Speaking me. of shy, yeah. Will you tell this the story about the the eagle and the condor? Oh right, okay, yay! Uh, story kids. Time. So we have this prophecy. It's called when the the eagle meets Cuff the condor. Someone. So um, basically, the way it goes is this is the story. I was told some, like some families tell it different, but the gist of the story remains the same. So um, the story that I was told was that there was a kid that would um, he would dream about these two big birds and he would he would call them the Thunderbird and the Wampum Bird and um, mm-hmm. or the Shell Bird. And he would talk about the, the people that come from the shell and my people would use um, Wampum Shells to basically do everything like it was our currency that's how we made our our belts that kept our history like everything and um he would dream about these two birds meeting and that there would come a time where the people would follow these birds to a central location and then the people would pile each other up on each other's shoulders until we could reach the birds and once we were able to reach the wingspan of the birds that's where our people would find true unity and peace and he sent this guy, um, he sent this guy out and he was like just this young dude. And he was like, listen, I'm going to need you to go talk to these people and spread this message to these nations so that they know when this time comes that it's time for our people to come together and unite together. And um, and he told him to, to tell them that we would, it, once we were united, we would be the strongest force that any indigenous nation had ever seen. And um, he would he said when the when the condor people the people protected by the condor and the people protected by the eagle when they meet together, um, the the way that we would rise up, no government could stand between us. That we would we would be too powerful. So this guy left, and he started traveling between the nations, and it it differs between family, but they say it took either twenty or forty years for him to do. All of, the, all of his traveling, that he went straight across Turtle Island and he met with every nation. Like, well, there's like 800 of us, right? So um, they met with every nation and he, he spread this story. And when he came home, that boy was a young man and he was married. He had kids. And when he got home and he asked that boy, um, like, what, when are the people coming? He told him, we'll never see it. So basically telling him like it's gonna it's gonna take time because there there needs to be something that brings us together. <clears throat> so a couple years ago, um shit, it was more than a couple years because my boy's like 15 now. So about 16, 17 years ago, there was um like we had our land reclamation going on. So we were reclaiming like and it, this was going straight across Canada. Like we were reclaiming things, we were shut shut down, we were digging up roads, like we were going crazy. There was a lot of logging going on. There was a lot of development happening. And um, we had, I think we had four or five Southern nations come up. We had this, we called it the Youth Elder Summit. So it's basically like a celebration of our youth and elders and, and bridging that gap between the generations. And we had, I think we had people come from New Zealand. Um a couple of the islands and uh, I can't remember where the last one came from. 
But they they came up and they basically they shared what teachings they could and and then they like we had like um like dance shows where we showed each other our dances and stuff like that. It was really awesome. And when we were done with all of that, this old guy came up and he said, um, now, now the Condor people have met the Eagle people. And from here on out, we have to start like supporting each other. We have to start stacking each other on each other's shoulders. And yeah. that's where the, um, like the prophecy started coming back. Because it was something that we had talked about, like it was, it was like a bedtime story for us when we would talk about the wampum bird and the thunderbird, <clears throat> and um, and a lot of people took it as like the thunderbird was some sort of creature, but like if you think back at that time, and and our people being in that time, man, a condor is a huge fucking bird. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, could you yeah, imagine? thing flying over your head like of course you're gonna think it's like a monster right so like we thought that it was like bedtime story type things but when this guy came and he told us that story we were like oh my god that's true then but between nations the story differs a little bit like how the prophecy came to be will change a little bit sometimes it's an old woman sometimes it's a young guy um to me it just makes sense that it would be the boy because our kids are so close to that spirit world still. That's true. Huh. What's your favorite story so far? <clears throat> I love it. Story. So, I mean, technically yes. in this lot are the eagle and the condor people meeting. Yes. Yeah, it We're is. We're doing work, guys. I'm here to be a Power Ranger, unstoppable force, whatever element I am on the Captain Planet ring thing. Oh my God, it's oh, Captain the Planet is yours. I just want to be a brown Sailor Moon, okay? The brown Sailor Moon. <laughs> and Sailor Moon. Oh. I totally wish I could change like that in the morning. Would have made my life so much easier. Right. Just snap and go. That would be nice. Right. But don't worry, Ma. The Cosmos got this. <laughs> Well, I don't know if there was any topics you guys still wanted to talk about, but we made it to 11. No. So we did oh. that. I wanted to add this earlier, but Abel was being kind of crazy. So I have seen so many videos of people saying, if you're reconnecting, just go to your nearest reserve and speak to an elder. Don't fucking do that. Because oh, I God, read please don't. Hours. Like, don't just roll up to a random res and be like, show me to your elders. We don't do that shit. No. But it wouldn't hurt to go to your nearest res and be like, where can I learn more about your nation? They'll point you in the right direction to who you need to speak to. And then tell them like, hey, you know what? I want to kind of reconnect to my roots. Maybe you don't know where you're from. Maybe you do. But a lot of times, like we keep saying, like all of us will say, Indian country is very small. So when when we're talking about like somebody coming to us from a different nation, a lot of times what happens here is somebody will come to us because we, we border another res, right? Somebody will come to us and then we find out that they're their roots are on the other res and never are we just like get the fuck off our res and go back home but we do tell them like this is where your your family would come from um if you don't know at all then a lot of times we just give you a little bit of information we give you some websites to look at because a lot of our nations do put websites together now um we mm -hmm. point you towards people that can give you information 
and then we just kind of let you do your thing. Like reconnecting is a lot of legwork. You can't reconnect from your couch. Mm-hmm. But also, don't just roll up to a res and expect to be like in the next sweat lodge because that's not going to happen. It's like, um, I can't remember who it was that said it. One of y'all brought it up. Um, you know, you show up to someone's barbecue and ask them and tell them like, oh, hey, I'm related to you. They're going to ask you questions. Yeah, you know that I mean? was your Mama Bird brought that up in one of her lies. Like, I just kind of, I was sitting at work and I'm like, let's see what Mama Bird's up to because she popped up on my thing. <laughs> and it was the best analogy I have ever heard of why we ask people where you, where you come from. Because our clans, our, our nations, our families. And what she said mm-hmm. was, um, see, the argument, the argument that we have a lot from people is that if the person is white passing, they don't get questioned, which is a lie. Coming from a pale ass kid that grew up on the res, I get questioned all the time and I fucking was born and raised. And reconnection. What is that? Being questioned for being white. My sister is very fair too. Fair skin, fair eyes, fair everything. She gets questioned too. Um, and she's fully aware of it and she will fully, fully tell people where she's from in our language and then in English. Yeah, and so Mama Bird says, and she was in, I believe she was in a black space. It was either a black space or an Afro-Indigenous space she was in and she said, if I go to your cookout, say you have a family cookout and I show up and I say to you, hey, I'm family. Are you going to just be like, okay, cool, come sit with us at the cool kids table or are you going to ask me who I belong to? And every one of them said, we're going to ask you who you belong to. Exactly. Not because you look different, but because we don't know you. And she said, that's exactly why we say to people, who are your people? Where do you come from? Who claims you? Because we're trying to figure out what nation do you come from? Because people don't understand the intricacies of our peace treaties with each other. Like these are thousand year old agreements we have with other nations. And sometimes those nations are like clear across the freaking island in North America. So when we're saying these things, another thing that we're trying to establish is what is your connection to me? What can I tell you about my your people? And and another point is sometimes people claim those connections and they don't have them. <laughs> exactly. Like, who take indigenous spaces and and they do it because now the government says that you can self-identify. And and part of self-identifying with us, because you've always been able to self-identify with our nations, but part of that is letting us know what family you come from. So if you walk onto the res and you're whiter than white and you say to somebody, oh, this is the family I come from. Okay, cool. We know your family. We don't care what you look like at that point. You you stop being an outsider regardless of what your phenotype is because now we know where your family comes from. So when she used that analogy, I was like, that is the best analogy I ever heard. And then she's like, and what if I said, now the potato salad is mine. Okay, now, now you're stepping on toes. Well, that's what we can. So you can't just say, I'm family and now I'm going to tell you everything about your nation because you're still reconnecting. You got to work your way up to potato salad. Maybe you can make the garden salad. And it was funny. Maybe. And I laughed, but, but everybody got it too. So I was like, that was actually, uh, that's why I brought it to you. Cause I'm like, yo, you gotta listen to this analogy. It was great. <laughs> it is. It's perfect. And I like that you added the potato salad component. Cause it's like, Hey, you know, even <laughs> if we're like, okay, your family, that doesn't mean you can make the potato salad or the mac and cheese or, you know, cook the meat. Like maybe you'll burn it. Maybe it'll be dry as hell. Maybe you won't season it. Like we need to know. There are things that we need right. to know about you. We need to know things about you. <laughs> what is <laughs> your palate like? <laughs> exactly. I have questions. I have questions. 
Like I remember um my daughter was dating a white guy and and he was like he was cool. Like he we never had any like weird issues of like, oh my god, there's a white kid in my house. Until the one day I opened <laughs> the fridge and was like, who the fuck brought unseasoned boiled chicken breast and put it in my fridge? <laughs> oh no. Like not a seasoning on it. <laughs> Because oh, my cooking no. for him. So his mom boiled him a chicken breast and sent it with him so he could eat while he was here. Poor little Tay Tay. I love it. It was so funny. And like things like that, like we got to laugh about things like that. But like, you know, otherwise he was pretty cool. His dad was a little bit creepy. Not creepy in a bad way. Just like, so his mom and dad were both hairstylists, which was like kind of like super cool. But his dad was always like, I just comb your hair. And I'm like, oh, I'm leaving now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I get that a lot from hairstylists, though, because I have long hair. And they're like, I just want to do your hair. And I'm like, no, thank you. Like, that's okay. I don't let anyone touch my hair. My, <laughs> my grandma used to pull the hairs off of her shirt. You know how, like, you lose little hairs throughout the day, she'd pull them off her shirt and shove them in her pocket. <sighs> oh, jeez. <laughs> My sister's like, ask if they washed it first, too. That's another thing, like... I can't, I can't not wash my chicken. At least rinse it off with some vinegar. You don't know whose hand touched it before it was packaged. Exactly. You don't know what surfaces that on. <laughs> I've seen TikTok videos where people are like putting shit with soap in like the bathtub to like wash their greens or whatever. And I'm like, what? Please tell me this is a joke. And, and they don't seriously think that this is the right. way to what, what in the, what? I, I seen the one the one girl was like, you have to use blue dawn because it kills all the germs. And I'm like, why? <laughs> or like, I have a question. The food. Who raised y'all? <laughs> Everybody yes, was so or bleach. I've seen people do bleach too. I'm like, why would you do that? Sorry, Odin. What were you gonna say? I have a question. So. Uh I know one of y'all's got the answers. Probably all of y'all got the answers. But anyway, my son <laughs> has issues, right? So he does not like keeping the pillowcase on the pillows. It irritates the fuck out of me. Like, oh my god, it irritates me. <laughs> but anyway, he he's always taking the pillowcases off the pillows. And so now his pillows are like all stained up, right? Like, you know, because he's a sweater and whatnot. What, how do I wash these pillows and get just, get that out of there? I wash my dog pillows, too. I just throw them in the washer. <laughs> there you go. Just throw them in the washer. Unless they're down pillows. If they're down pillows, then you need to, um, you could use, like, a, a steam cleaner. Hmm. Oh, my pillows are down pillows. I didn't know you had to use a steam cl steam steam cleaner for that. Do they get like do they get funky and when you wash them though? Like if you were to wash them and dry them, do they get like No. They got feathers sticking oh. out of them and shit. Wash them and dry them. Yeah, if your feathers ain't coming out, wash them and dry them. Oh, uh, they're they they're good. I they I stole them from like the a, light I stole them from a hotel once. Oh, you know what? <laughs> in a hotel for five months. You think I stole any fucking pillows? No, I took the sheets. <laughs> I miss the days when you could take pillows and towels and not get charged for it. I took so many towels. <laughs> like when you're living there for five months, they stop counting your towels. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just bring me the whole the whole stack. I might need. Some of the oh, hotels be having little ass towels too. Sorry. This is so funny. I throw everything in the washer if it don't survive the washer. It's just a shrug emoji. True. <laughs> Only the strong survive. <laughs> Only the strong survive. <laughs> Wow. 
Well, this is a Sparta. Bye, baby. How do you make your How do you make your um your your pillows not go flat though? You fluff them. You fluff them. Yeah, you but even them. when you fluff them, they still go flat. If you're like when you dry them, if you stop them halfway through the dry cycle and then you fluff them up and throw them back in, they dry a little bit more fluffy. Okay, good I mean, night. You will eventually have to replace them. But yeah, if they just keep going flat. But they're expensive. But that... Ugh. I mean... Yeah. And I'm super, super, super picky about my pillows. So I'm like, okay, I'm cool with these pillows. I don't want to ever buy any other ones. You know, okay, so <laughs> I have these cheap-ass pillows. I think I got them at Walmart for like $4 a piece. And they're so freaking flat yeah. now because one of them got a hole in it and like half the stuffing came out. So there's two of them in a pillowcase. And then I made Bud buy me um, a bamboo pillow because I just like the idea of having a bamboo pillow. I used it like four times and my neck got sore and now he uses both of them. And I'm back to my, fluff my fluffless pillow. <laughs> I like flat pillows. I sleep Do on my stomach a do you have a sewing machine, Odin? Because maybe you can just like open up your pillow. I can't add sew. Some more stuffing I don't to know it. How to sew. sew it back up. I mean, you can even do it by hand. You don't even need a sewing machine. You just whip stitch. I don't know. I don't know how. It's super easy. I need. You, you know what? Just find me I an auntie in you. that knows how to do things. I told you to come up here. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, if you end up back in Florida... Buy me an auntie that'll marry me so that I can come up there. <laughs> I told you, got a comma. <laughs> There's lots. I'm going to be like, hey, marry my bro. they will be like, which one? <laughs> I'm coming to take Goni's spot. But Goni's, you can sleep on a couch. I'm taking those six pillows. I <laughs> <sighs> think I'm about to hop off this live. Yeah, it's late I'm for late. you, yeah? Yeah, it's late for, I'm sure it's late for everybody. But I appreciate everyone being here. Oh, well, lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I job. love you guys. Thank you for the awesome live. Yes, yeah. thank everyone for coming to talk and share your experiences and your knowledge and all of that stuff. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, everyone. Nice, thank you. nice seeing everyone here and have a good night. Yes, too. good night, everybody. Oh, no. Bye.